Russia plan for military intervention in North Korea to stop a nuclear apocalypse. Russia is looking at the possibility of military intervention in North Korea to stop a nuclear fallout, according to a member of the Russian Security Council. Following North Korea's declaration earlier this week that it now has nuclear capability to target the whole of the U.S., Russia's Security Council Secretary Nikolai Petrashev has confirmed Russia is considering its options. Mr. Petrashev admitted that Pyongyang's actions had put Russia at risk due to the potential of an outbreak of war. He said, if there is military action, and you know some countries do not rule it out, this would create all sorts of problems, including for us. Donald Trump continually said he would use military intervention in North Korea if the U.S. or any of its allies were put at risk. Addressing South Korea's National Assembly in November Trump insisted that the U.S. would not be intimidated by Kim Jong-un's rhetoric and called for other countries to respond to the twisted regime's threats with the sign of military force. He also warned the three largest aircraft carriers in the world are appropriately positioned to face Pyongyang. He has also previously called diplomatic negotiations with the rogue state a waste of time. Mr. Petrashev also said that Russia was getting ready for a military standoff between its unruly neighbor and other states around the world. He said, we are assessing this and preparing ourselves. We will not be taken by surprise. He added, we basically share a border with them. That's why we are interested in a political and diplomatic solution. Tensions between North Korea and the U.S. have risen in recent months as Mr. Trump and his Korean counterpart have taken part in a war of words. Addressing the U.N. in October Trump called Kim Jong-un rocket man on a suicide mission and vowed to totally destroy the corrupt nation. However, the rhetoric between the two nations heated up earlier this week following another missile test by North Korea. The North Korean missile was fired eastwards from the Hermit State. The missile landed about 210 kilometers west of Japan's Kurakujima Island, Tokyo said. Japanese media reports the missile was in the air for 50 minutes, indicating a very high-altitude flight path. It traveled east for around 620 miles into an altitude of 2,500 miles before crashing into the Sea of Japan. The Korean Central News Agency made a statement following the missile test in which they bragged that they now had the ability to hit all the U.S. mainland. Trump responded to the new threat by ominously saying we will deal with it. Vladimir Putin has rushed troops to the North Korean border after Kim Jong-un's latest missile launch. The tubby tyrant raised fears of an impending nuclear war by launching his most terrifying missile to date. Tests show that the North fired a brand new missile which is believed to be one of the most advanced in their arsenal. The Hermit Kingdom has now claimed that this missile can hit anywhere in the U.S. And Russian hardman appears to have reacted by deploying troops to Russia's only border with the North. According to Newsweek, Russian Marines are practicing landing operations at the North Korea after its ICBM launch. Their naval infantry, and are reported to have conducted an amphibious charge, simulating an attack on the North. Pacific Fleet spokesman confirmed to State News Rio Novosti that the training exercise took place on the Clerk Training Range. This is not the first time Russia has moved troops to their North Korean border. Days after the Rotan ruler test fired a missile in September, Russian troops were lined up on the border. Dozens of U.S. tanks have also been deployed near the north after Trump warned all nations to cut ties with its rogue leadership. The dictator of North Korea made a choice yesterday that brings the world closer to war, not farther from it. We have never sought war with North Korea. And still today, we do not seek it. If war does come, it will be because of continued acts of aggression like we witnessed yesterday. And if war comes, make no mistake, the North Korean regime will be utterly destroyed. The nations of the world have it within their power to further isolate, diminish, and God willing, 
reverse the dangerous course of the North Korean regime. We must all do our part to make that happen. North Korea is issuing a new threat to the U.S., warning of a, quote, super mighty preemptive strike. This comes after Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said the White House was looking to put more pressure on the regime. This is a constantly developing story minute by minute. What is the latest? You're right, Shannon. There seems to be a lot of back and forth at the moment as the U.S. and their allies consistently say that the North Korean regime must change its ways. The regime continues to threaten these attacks. And as you say today, they have threatened a super mighty preemptive strike, saying that they could immediately wipe out U.S. forces in South Korea and also strike the U.S. mainland, reducing them to ashes. Their provocations now seem to be ratcheting up. But Secretary Tillerson, his response was as measured as ever. We're reviewing all the status of North Korea, both in terms of state sponsorship of terrorism, as well as all the other ways in which we can bring pressure to bear on the regime in Pyongyang. So no let up from North Korea, but continued pressure from the administration to try and solve this awful solution, this awful problem. Shannon? Okay, so China, obviously, Benjamin, a key player here. The president's talked a lot about our growing role with them, his chemistry with their top leader. Mm. What does that country now have to say about how this is playing out? You know, Shannon, there's been sort of mixed signals from them. Of course, China has a relationship with North Korea. They have done for some time, and that's not going to change overnight. But they are getting frustrated with the regime. You know, the U.S. has a pretty good relationship with China on this at the moment, as seen with Trump's meeting with the president in Mar-a-Lago. But the Chinese say they are opposed to any U.S. unilateral sanctions and action in Korea. And they've also said that at the moment, they continue normal relations, including normal business contacts, with the rogue state. Meanwhile, the U.S. and South Korea continued joint exercises named Max Thunder to serve as a deterrence as tensions mount. About 100 aircraft, including F-16s, took part in the drills aimed at checking the Air Force's air battle and surgical strike capabilities in an emergency situation. So very tense situations in the Korean Peninsula, but the U.S. still saying the era of strategic patience is over. All options remain on the table. We are seeking peace not begging for it. We will defend the peace and security of our nation by our own might. Our army is at a state of maximum alert to respond to the U.S. military build-up. If we notice any sign of assault on our sovereignty, our army will launch merciless military strikes against the U.S. aggressors wherever they may exist, from the remote U.S. lands to the U.S. military bases in the Korean Peninsula, like those of Japan and elsewhere. The recent U.S. maneuvers and the previous ones, which the U.S. keeps saying are annual defensive routines, have revealed the hostile intentions of the U.S. Those moments fall within the scenario of preemptive strikes that are directly targeting our supreme command and strategic positions, like our missile and nuclear capabilities. The new Trump administration should look to the world with open eyes. The time of dictating orders by brandishing the U.S. military might has gone. If those businessmen in power in the U.S. thought they could intimidate us with military or sanction threats, as the Obama administration used to do and failed, they will soon find out such threats are useless. Unless the U.S. abandons its hostile policies against North Korea, there will be no chance for any future bilateral meetings at any level. It is a prerequisite that Washington gives up those antagonistic policies against us. The six-party talks aimed at making the Korean Peninsula free of nuclear weapons were throttled at birth. They no longer exist. The nuclear weapon in our possession is not an illusion. It is not a commodity that can be traded for American dollars, nor is it for sale. So it cannot be put on the negotiating table with the aim of taking it away from us. The United States of America will always seek peace, but under President Trump, the shield stands guard and the sword stands ready. Rest assured, under President Trump's leadership, the United States will continue to protect our people and our allies and to strengthen the bonds between us today, tomorrow, and every day that follows. History will attest the soldier does not bear the sword in vain. And those who would challenge our resolve or our readiness should know. We will defeat any attack and meet 
any use of conventional or nuclear weapons with an overwhelming and effective American response. Part of the response to the increase in provocation from Pyongyang was supposed to be the deployment of another U.S. carrier and its supporting ships. Just over a week ago, the U.S. government implied that the ships were on their way to the Korean Peninsula. We are sending an armada, very powerful. We have submarines, very powerful, far more powerful than the aircraft carrier, that I can tell you. The problem is that it actually wasn't at that time. New York Times revealed that when Trump and a number of officials made the claim, U.S. carrier Carl Vinson, along with three other warships, were in fact heading to the opposite direction to take part in joint exercise with the Australian Navy in the Indian Ocean. And that blip could have stayed unnoticed if the Navy itself did not post a picture of the vessel last Saturday, saying it was made while Carl Vinson was passing through Sunda Strait off the coast of Indonesia. The, ultimate, the untimely and uncoordinated announcement sent a lot of blushes onto the faces of the Pentagon officials, but now the White House says their armada is finally headed to the Sea of Japan. I believe that he might have spoken too quickly on this uh, location of the vessel um, no, before it was actually President arriving. Said we have an armada going towards the peninsula. That's a fact. It happened. It is happening, rather. It was announced that it was going. It will be there. Um, we were asked simply a question on that. I think all other questions should be asked of the Department of Defense. Right. But in Pyongyang, the propaganda continues. State television aired footage of a musical performance to mark the birthday of the late founding father, Kim Il-sung. His grandson and the current leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, attended the show. It ended with mock footage of missiles flying over the Pacific, striking the United States and engulfing it in flames. Meanwhile, an amateur video footage filmed in the Russian Far East went viral online, showing redeployment of Russian troops onto the border with North Korea. The Kremlin said through its spokesperson Dmitry Peskov on Monday that only a coordinated international effort would be the right way to solve the Korean crisis peacefully, noting at the same time that Moscow was highly concerned with what was happening on the Russian Far Eastern border. Мы не приемлем ядерные ракетные авантюрные действия Пхеньяна в нарушении многочисленных резолюций Совета Безопасности ООН, но это отнюдь не означает, что можно таким же образом нарушать международные права, применяя силу. Я очень надеюсь, что односторонних действий, наподобие тех, которых мы видели вот недавно в Сирии, не будет. И что Соединенные Штаты будут следовать той линии, которую президент Трамп неоднократно озвучивал в период своей предвыборной кампании. The same notion has been voiced by Beijing. So things may have calmed down a little bit for now, but the situation can hardly be described as stable. The U.S. fleet is expected to arrive by the coast of the Korean Peninsula early next week.